Today we're making the classic French steak au poivre. And if you wanna make a great steak au poivre, you must start with a great stock. So before we get into the steak, we must first make the stock. So let's jump right into it. So I've got a little hotel pan here. You can use a sheet tray, whatever you like. I've got the oven preheated to 450 degrees. And I've got some beef bones and some oxtail. These are nice cheap cuts. The oxtail has some meat and some bone marrow, and that's gonna add a ton of flavor. The bones obviously have bone and bone marrow. So I'm gonna get them all in here. Whatever tough cuts that are cheap can be used here, but this was what was available at the store today. Just gonna add a little bit of tomato paste, get these guys nicely coated in some of that tomato. It's gonna give it a nice depth, rich flavor for our steak sauce. And then just a little salt. We don't wanna go too crazy because this whole stock's gonna reduce down a lot. So to concentrate a salt, if you add too much salt, it might become salty at the end. As we season through stages, just be careful. This is gonna go into the oven. I'm just gonna roast it on 450 degrees until they all get nice and brown. Now it's pretty obvious a good steak our probable requires a good steak. My steak of choice for this recipe is a filet mignon. Right here I have a beautiful prime piece of filet mignon. It's nice and thick. It's not like a thin little piece. This is a real nice steakhouse piece of beef. And now one of the keys of this recipe is developing a good sear for the pan to make the pan sauce. And we're adding a ton of peppercorn. So if we add salt and peppercorn, there might be an uneven distribution of either of those two ingredients. So one thing to do now, especially if you have some time, if we're making beef stock, if you're thinking ahead, we're gonna salt this thing now. Allow that salt to penetrate it so that we don't need to put a crust of salt on top. We can put a crust of pepper. Again, you can salt it before you're going to cook it, but you might just run the risk of having a lot of that salt fall off or the peppercorn fall off. So by salting it now, we're gonna allow it time while the stock cooks for the salt to penetrate. And then all we need to do is hit it with pepper. So I'm just gonna get it well seasoned. It's a really big thick piece of steak. So I wanna make sure I get it really well coated. Now, this is gonna go in the refrigerator uncovered for a day, day and a half to dry out. Here's one that's been in the fridge drying out. Can you see the difference? In this one, the moisture is sort of released. It's dried out a bit. It's concentrated almost like a dry age. This still has moisture in it. That salt's gonna pull the moisture out. The moisture is gonna get reabsorbed back into the steak and seasoned all the way through, which is what happened with this. So this one goes into the fridge uncovered. This one's ready to go. But since we've got some time while the stock gets going, I'm just gonna pop this back in the fridge until we're ready to use it. That's gonna get a really good sear. After about 30 minutes or so, I'm gonna take the bones out. I'm gonna give them a rotate just so we can get some nice color development on all sides. And then I'm gonna pop that back in the oven. And after about an hour or so, they should be all nicely caramelized all the way around. I'm gonna get a Dutch oven on the stove and then I'm gonna transfer the bones and the oxtails into the Dutch oven and I'm gonna fill it up with water. Fill it up all the way, but you wanna be mindful to leave some space up at the top because you're gonna be adding some vegetables in later and you don't wanna displace the water. Now bring it up to a simmer. Now, while that stock comes up to a simmer, now we can roast the vegetable. I've got some of my fresh garlic. If you watched my last gnocchi video, we talk about fresh garlic. So this garlic has a little bit of its stem on. Throw that right in there. I'm gonna split the clove of garlic in half. See, that's that beautiful hard neck garlic. Big cloves in one sort of circle around the stem. This goes into the pan. Some celery, some carrots, and all of these things can be cut into a rough dice. I'm gonna make a quicker stock than normally, so I just wanna cut them a bit smaller than normal. Then with the onion, I'm just gonna cut it into these little wedges, then I'm gonna get all of that into the hotel pan, coat it with some of that tomato paste, a little bit of salt, and get it all mixed up. And we're gonna pop this into that same oven and just roast it the same. We just wanna get a nice kind of caramelization developed on these vegetables. Now get them into the oven and we can check on our broth, which is coming up to a simmer. And as it does, all these particles rise up and it's this scum that forms on the top, which you can start to skim off. But I walked away and then it started to boil. And as you can see, once it boils, it sort of redistributes that into the stock, which isn't exactly what you want. You want it to simmer, but it is going to be okay. I'm gonna turn the heat down low right away and start skimming away any of that foamy scum off the top of the broth and just discard it into a little bowl. Now it's nice and clean and the vegetables should be fully roasted and caramelized now. I'm gonna fish out the vegetables, add them to the broth gently. I'm gonna get all that fat out of the hotel pan and then I'm gonna add some water to deglaze and I'm gonna scrape up all those bits off the pan and just pour those into the stock pot. Then we can throw in a little bundle of thyme and rosemary, a bay leaf and a handful of peppercorns. We wanna again bring that up to a simmer and you're gonna start to see all these particles start to come up again. And it's a little harder to skim now with all the vegetables in there but as we see some of that scum rise up, 
we just want to go ahead and get rid of it. We're going to let that simmer for around four to six hours. After six hours, it should look like this. Then I'm going to get it off the heat, strain out the solids through a fine mesh strainer, and strain it into a smaller pot. Pour the rest of the broth in there, strain it all out, and get it back onto the stove. And as you're going to see, there's a layer of fat at the top of the broth. We're going to want to remove that. So I'm going to take a spoon and just start slowly getting that layer of fat out of there. And then we just want to boil this hard. And we want to reduce this all the way down until it becomes thicker. And every time you see any bit of foamy scum accumulate at the surface, you just want to scoop that out, clean it up real nice. And we want to reduce this until it's about a quarter of its original volume. You can see the lines on the side of the pan it helps you decide how far you've reduced it. Also by the thickness of it. It should be a lot thicker than it was. The smell should be more intense and aromatic. Once it's there, you should be left with about a cup and a half to two cups of the stock. You want to get that into a bowl, let it cool. Now the quality of this stock is undeniable and it's prepped to make a sauce, which means it's reduced down, slightly thickened. It's going to thicken a little bit more when we cook it. This is going to make an incredible sauce. However, if you wanted to, you could avoid doing that and use a good quality beef broth like this. I'd maybe get two of these, reduce them down, they'll thicken. This is like a real commercial product made the way that you just saw me make it. This is found in the freezer aisle because it spoils, because it's real, and it's a little bit more expensive. But if you want to avoid that process to get this quality, you have to pay for it but you cannot use a box for this. You could, but it's just not gonna be good and you're gonna judge my recipe when you could have just made it yourself. So no box. Now we'll set that off to the side. And now the whole centerpiece of steak au pois is the peppercorn steak. So what I'm gonna do is just get a few handfuls in here and just grind them up. A mortar and pestle is great, but you can use a Ziploc bag and a pan, but I'm just gonna start cracking them. And then once they're slightly cracked, I'm gonna just start to grind and twist them and just work it around the mortar and pestle until the peppercorns are sort of grinded down to about a quarter of their original size. I'm gonna pour the peppercorns into a plate. Then I'm gonna take the steak and you see how we have this really nice flat dried out surface that has been facing up. The bottom side's a little less perfect. So that's the side that I wanna coat in the peppercorn. And I'm gonna press that steak into the peppercorn so that that imperfect side of the beef gets entirely coated on that one side in peppercorns. Now for the sauce, since we have all that heat from the fresh cracked black pepper, I'm gonna use these green peppercorns in brine. They're like black pepper, but everything about it is milder. And they're in the brine, so there's a little salt to it. Now we got our peppercorns for the sauce. We've got our dried cracked peppercorn crusted steak ready. We've got our perfect beef stock slash demi glaze. We've got about a quarter cup of heavy cream, maybe a hefty quarter cup, and then we're gonna need some cognac. Now, cognac is a type of brandy. It sort of just adheres to higher standard qualities, so it's a little bit better, I guess. I'm not a Hennessy a cognac drinker, so I only keep a small little bottle like this on hand whenever I need it for cooking. And this is all we're really gonna need except a little bit of salt to adjust the seasoning at the end. And now for this recipe, we're going to be using the 10 inch carbon steel frying pan from our longtime sponsor, Maiden. And if you're looking to get started using carbon steel for your cooking, Cooking, Maiden's got you covered. Maiden designs professional quality products for the home cook and they partner with multi-generational factories and artisans to offer what I think is one of the most comprehensive collections of pots, pans, serveware, and everything else you need to cook and serve food in the home kitchen. And their carbon steel collection has it all, including the eight inch, the 10 inch, and the 12 inch frying pan, a pizza steel, a paella pan, a roasting pan, and a wok. It's the perfect hybrid of a cast iron pan and a stainless steel frying pan. It heats quickly, it's half the weight of a cast iron, it's just as durable, it's easy to move from stovetop to the oven where it can handle up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, which also makes it perfect for outdoor cooking. And just like a cast iron pan, the more you use the carbon steel, the more seasoned it gets and eventually becomes naturally nonstick. This is the one I'll be using today. And because Maiden loves my audience, they're offering a 10% off discount on all of their products when you use my link down in the description. And now we can get the steak seared. Now get the carbon steel pan on medium high to high heat, and then we're gonna add a touch of oil, not too much, and just coat the bottom of the pan. And we get the steak in peppercorn side facing up. And I'm just gonna press that into the pan, and I like to offset it off to the side, the hotter part of the pan. And I'm gonna leave it alone. It's going to stick to the pan, and as long as it sticks, I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna let it cook for about four minutes, and as soon as it will release naturally from the pan, and it has a beautiful sear just like this, I'm gonna flip it, and I'm gonna toast that other side. But since those peppercorns sort of 
raise the meat slightly above the pan. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil and I'm also gonna sort of brown that side with the pan slightly tilted just so I can brown the edges of that steak and get that side nicely caramelized. Once those peppercorns are nicely toasted and the steak is browned on that side, we're gonna flip it, place it back on that wire rack and place it in a 400 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes while we make our sauce. Now wipe that pan out and then get it back onto the stove and I'm just gonna sprinkle maybe a teaspoon of the fresh cracked black peppercorn into the pan to, to toast for like 30 seconds. Then I'm gonna take that Hennessy. I'm gonna turn the heat off on the pan and I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of the Hennessy and allow that to deglaze. Once it stops spitting, you can turn the heat back on and you can use your nose to smell if the alcohol's burned off. Once the alcohol doesn't burn the nostrils anymore, it's evaporated out. And when it's nice and reduced and bubbly like this, then we can go ahead and add in our beef demi-glaze or the beef stock that's been reduced. Then we can add those green peppercorns, the cream, stir it all together, and then reduce, reduce, reduce. We're gonna reduce this down till it's nice, thick, and glazy. The bubbles tell you a lot. The thicker and more they are, the, th the closer you are to done. By now, it's been about 17 minutes on the steak, so I'm gonna pull it out and temp it. And what I'm looking for is 125 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature before I rest, which is what we're at. So we're gonna rest it. Now that sauce is nice and thick and luscious and glazy. That's the proper consistency. Then to finish the sauce, I'm just gonna cube up some really cold butter and slowly work it in. After you've worked in a tablespoon of that butter, check for seasoning. And some people like it darker, some people like it a little lighter with a little bit more cream. That's up to you. The best au poivres I've had have been a darker sauce like this. And then we're ready to plate. Place the steak onto the plate and then pour that sauce right on top. It should cascade off the sides of the steak and flow lusciously onto the plate. When you cut into it, the steak is perfectly cooked. It's a medium the way that I like it. And when you drag that steak through that sauce, it clings to the steak and it's packed with flavor that only you can get when you make your own stock. Straight fire. Once you taste it yourself and you know you can execute it like the best steakhouse in the world can, you're never going to pay triple the price anymore. With just a little bit of time, any one of you can achieve a perfect steak au poivre at home. It's seriously insanely good. Recipe is going to be down in the description. That's all that I have today. I got to finish eating this. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.